the Senator from New Hampshire. Thank you, Mr. President. And it is good to hear from my colleague from Texas. Uh, I am here to talk about uh, a different issue, two different issues, but I did just want to say uh, that I have had the pleasure and honor of visiting Senator Cornyn's wonderful state. I was at the border, in fact, last spring. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful state. Uh, full of hardworking and welcoming people. And certainly our men and women on the front lines of the border are, are working incredibly hard and have a lot of excellent ideas about how to secure the border. I do just want to make one point, uh, which is simply that in addressing a humanitarian crisis at the border, we shouldn't create another one in separating families at the border. And to be clear, there is nothing in our law that requires families to be separated at the border. Uh, we simply should not be harming children as we deal with this issue. Uh, and I would welcome Senator Cornyn to our Homeland uh, Security Committee where we have discussed the various options that would keep us from hurting children in our care. Uh, with that, uh, I'm here today, Mr. President, also to rise in opposition to the Trump administration's domestic gag rule on the Title X program. Mr. President, for more than 40 years, Title X has provided women and families with comprehensive family planning and preventive health services. Congress created Title X with a strong bipartisan vote, with members of both parties recognizing how vital the services it provides are. Since then, for those in rural communities, for low-income women and men, and for members of the LGBTQ community, Title X supported health centers have been a major source of preventative care and reproductive health services, including cancer screenings, birth control, HIV and STI tests, and counseling services. Mr. President, Title X helps communities and people throughout my home state of New Hampshire. Title X funded centers deliver care to nearly 18,000 Granite Staters annually, and Title X supported Planned Parenthood centers serve 60% of those Granite Staters. In some parts of my state, there are no options other than a Title X center. And if other options exist, they don't provide the same expertise and commitment to reproductive health care services that Title X centers offer. Community health centers around my state do important work, but they have told me that they will not be able to replace the services lost if the administration is successful in its efforts to target Planned Parenthood. Mr. President, the Trump administration's gag rule is simply dangerous. It would force providers to violate their professional and ethical standards regarding their obligation to give patients full and accurate information about their health care, and would discriminate against providers who refuse to curtail truthful communication with their patients. And this rule would cut investments in family planning clinics, taking away services that so many people depend on, with a disproportionate effect on low-income families and those who already struggle to access care. This effort is part of the shameless, blatantly political attempts from this administration to restrict access to health care. Mr. President, by attacking providers such as Planned Parenthood, the Trump administration is once again threatening the health and economic well-being of millions. Women in New Hampshire and across the country deserve better. They should have the right to make their own choice about if or when to start a family. And they should be able to visit providers of their choice who understand their health care needs and will be truthful about their health care options and realities. This Title X gag rule undermines all of that. I'm going to continue to stand up for a woman's constitutionally protected rights. And I will do everything I can to fight back against these partisan attempts from the Trump administration to undermine women's reproductive health care. Thank you. Mr. President, I also want to take a moment 
to express my opposition to a nominee the Senate is considering today for the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, Naomi Rao. Ms. Rao is up for a lifetime appointment on the D.C. Circuit, but her record and previous statements make it clear that she is unfit for this position. Mr. President, Ms. Rao's writings as a college student are nothing short of outrageous. Ms. Rao once described race as a, and this is a quote, hot money-making issue, close quote. She's called the fight for LGBTQ equality a, quote, trendy political movement, close quote. And she's criticized the, quote, dangerous feminist idealism which teaches women that they are equal, close quote. But perhaps most disturbing are Ms. Rao's previous writings on campus sexual assault and rape. Ms. Rao once claimed that women shared the responsibility for being raped, saying, quote, if she drinks to the point where she can no longer choose, well, getting to that point was part of her choice, close quote. And she also noted, quote, a good way to avoid potential date rape is to stay reasonably sober, close quote. Now, I know that Ms. Rao has said she regretted these comments now that she's up for this appointment. But that cannot make up for the type of damage that rhetoric like this has done. In 2019, survivors are still not listened to and taken seriously. And dangerous rhetoric and callous beliefs like these have prevented women from coming forward with their experiences of sexual assault in the first place. Mr. President, I cannot support a nominee who made a decision to publish this type of outrageous sentiment. And if Ms. Rao's previous statements weren't already disqualifying, then her record as a member of the Trump administration certainly is. As the head of the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, OIRA, Ms. Rao signed off on a policy that would allow the Environmental Protection Agency to not use the best available evidence when developing clean air and clean water protections a policy with dangerous implications given the fact that the Trump administration has ignored science and fought to undermine these protections. Ms. Rao signed off on this policy even after publicly pledging to me in a Homeland Security and Government Affairs subcommittee hearing that she would do just the opposite. Additionally, one of Ms. Rao's first efforts in the Trump administration was approving an effort to eliminate reporting requirements proposed by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission to identify wage discrimination with regard to race and gender. And finally, Ms. Rao approved of the Title X gag rule, which, as I just discussed, will harm the health and well-being of people across the country. Mr. President, it is clear that Ms. Rao is a partisan nominee with a dangerous record. Oh, and by the way, she has never tried a case, not in federal court, not in state court. Given her past comments, her record in the Trump administration, and her complete lack of experience, it is clear that she does not meet the standard that a lifetime appointment to a vital court requires. I'll oppose her nomination today, and I urge my colleagues to do the same thing. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.